I love creating view controllers programmatically. So this video is about my version of a UI collection cell and UI collection view all created programmatically. Hope it helps you out. So this particular video actually contains two view controllers and there's a menu in the code that takes you through either to a plain view controller or a subclassed version. And when we look at them, they're actually very, very extremely similar. So we'll talk through how we actually code those. So here I'm going to talk you through the code. The scene delegate is kind of the entry point for the app where we're creating the window and we're setting the view controller. And the initial view controller that I'm placing embedding inside a navigation controller is this menu view controller where you choose either the view controller or the subclass version. So let's have a look at this menu. There's nothing too interesting and I don't really want to talk through stack views and how this is set up. So for this and other sections of the code, feel free to download the repo and take a look yourself. But everything's programmatic, of course, and that means we're using load view in every instance. So the menu is the same as the view controller for this. So the view controller, which doesn't use a subclass cell, we have the data just in the view controller. Yes, of course there's an argument we should use MVVM or whatever to separate this out into different files. Here, I'm just trying to keep things simple and I've got everything in the view controller. We have a property to hold the collection view. I've called it creatively collection view. And load view sets up our collection, collection view flow layout. And it's going to scroll horizontally and have these colors as blocks that can move across the screen. We set the frame and layout and we set that view to be the collection view. When view did load is called, and we should never forget we should call super on view did load, we set the data source and the delegate to be the same file, which is this one, the view controller, and we register the general UI collection view. And Basically, we have the usual collection view delegate and data source methods. So did select item at, doesn't do anything particularly exciting, just logs to the screen. And you can see down here the type of thing that that logs. Bit of string interpolation there, but nothing too exciting. And the number of items we have is adjust the number of items in the array above, which is that array of colors. And then we're just setting the background to be the relevant piece of data. So the background color will be the specific UI color, whether it's red or blue. And since we're using the standard cell, we just dequeue the set cell with the reuse identifier that we've set above. So we've set it there as we've, we've registered the cell with the collection view, and we just return it. The difference with subclassing is we have to do slightly more work. So part of that is to create a new file, which is our subclass collection view cell. And all it's doing is setting the background color to be the UI color you feed it. And that's this function, which is kind of the whole API. So what we're going to do is register this subclass cell in our subclass cell view controller, which happens to be this file. So we still have the same data. View did load as before, but when we're registering, we're registering our subclass collection view cell rather than the standard one. Our load view, pretty much the same. These delegate and data source functions, the same. But the difference is here. When we dequeue the cell, we take the data, but we're using the function within subclass collection view cell to set the color. And then we return it. It feels like there's not much advantage to subclassing it, but you're getting a lot more potential for configuration. What do I mean by that? In this example, we're just setting colors. But you can do a whole load of things here. You can set up a um, label, and then here you'd set up the text within that label, for example. And you can put it wherever you want. It's much more flexible to use the subclassed version. 
but it involves an extra file and a bit more configuration. I hope that video has helped you out and it's really something that I hope you can use in your work or in your studies and don't forget all the codes in the repo so just go to the link and you can download everything.